In 2022, a base jumper spun out of control and struck a wall after jumping off a 400-foot cliff in Moab, Utah. As he bounced down along the rock wall, his parachute snagged on a ledge, leaving him dangling 60 feet above the ground. Onlookers witnessed the horrifying incident as he hung from the ledge, hoping a gust of wind wouldn't knock him off the ledge to what would be a certain death. He needed help, and he needed it fast. This is the incredible story of what happened next. Base jumping is different from other forms of parachuting, such as skydiving, in that base jumping is from objects generally at much lower altitudes. And base jumpers only carry one parachute. They jump from a fixed object, and the term base stands for the four categories of fixed objects which they jump from. And those are buildings, antenna, which are radio masts, spans, which are also bridges, and earth, also known as cliffs. And base jumping is significantly more hazardous than other forms of parachuting, and it's considered to be one of the most dangerous extreme sports. Carl Banish was a filmmaker who in 1978 filmed base jumps from El Capitan in Yosemite National Park. He was an important part of the history of modern base jumping, and he helped popularize the sport because he was a budding filmmaker and he filmed everything that they did. And Carl and his buddies were the ones who actually coined the term base jumping. He continued to promote the sport until his death in 1984 at 43 years of age from, you guessed it, base jumping. And then there's base numbers, which are awarded to those jumpers who have made at least one jump from each of the four categories. And because that's not crazy enough for your average base jumper, there's a night base jumping award, which means flinging yourself off of each of those structures at night. Can you think of anything more terrifying? And the biggest difference between base jumping and skydiving is the parachute. Base jumpers only use one parachute, while skydivers have a main and a reserve parachute. The main reason that they only have one chute in base jumping is that there just isn't enough time to deploy two. The base parachute is significantly smaller, and base jumping is not really regulated in any way, like, unlike skydiving. Skydivers typically jump between 8 and 14,000 feet, while low altitude jumps are performed around 3,500 to 5,000 feet. Base jumps are usually around 300 to 1,000 feet. And skydiving landing areas are much safer. They're typically kept free of debris, so they're safe. Base jumps are usually less than ideal landing areas. They're usually rocky surfaces. There's buildings nearby. There's streets or power lines. There's a lot of things that can get in their way. So jumpers have to be really careful when they choose a location to jump. So the fatality rate of base jumping is one in 2,300. For skydiving, it's one in 357,000, and there's even fewer deaths when you're jumping tandem with an instructor. On November 26, 2022, an annual base jumping festival called the Turkey Boogie event took place in Moab, Utah. And it's not just a thrill-seeking event, it's all for a good cause. They help out the local search and rescue team by fundraising for them. One of the jumpers that day was a 35-year-old base jumper from Australia, and he was preparing to jump off a 400-foot cliff. He got geared up and he put on his backpack, parachute, helmet on, and then jumped off into the abyss. Right after that, a gust of wind hit his parachute, sending him colliding into the cliff. In this one Saturday, oh, a base jumper from Australia slams into a cliff. His parachute oh. caught on the rock and left him dangling, in danger of dropping at any moment. Oh no. Oh my God, is he just hanging there? Is he? Yeah. yeah. But still, he was dangling 60 feet in the air in a very precarious position. A gust of wind could whip up at any moment and throw him from the rock wall. The man had jumped off of this 450 foot tall cliff, was hanging about 100 feet in the air, and the only way to get to him, rappel down 300 feet or climb up from the bottom. Justin Beatler, a fellow base jumper in the area that day, shed some light on the situation. He said, basically, when you jump out from a wall, your chute is supposed to open straight out and then you fly away from the wall. 
but it can open in different directions. And that's what happened here. The chute opened in the opposite direction of what it was supposed to. The jumper's body started spinning and he didn't have time to reach up to turn his chute. Instead of lifting him away from the wall, the parachute sucked him into it. So River Barry is a mountain climber and adventure enthusiast from Moab. River was out with friends that day and they were just getting ready for a mountain bike ride. She was pumping up her tires and her two friends were standing nearby. She didn't see the jumper crash, but her friend did and told her what happened. And right then, someone came sprinting up to them asking if they had any climbing gear. The man was Justin, the person I referred to earlier, and he was a friend of the victim. River said that she had a double rack, two harnesses, and a rope in her van. So she ran and got the gear and handed him some of it while they ran to the base of the wall together. She said, my heart was just pounding through my chest, but I was in go mode. It's like you don't think, you just do. When they got to the base of the wall, they started putting on the harnesses and gear and started to discuss a strategy on how to rescue the jumper. Justin suggested climbing the crack 10 feet to the left of the jumper and then traversing over. River looked up and realized that wouldn't work. The traverse was just non-existent. Their only chance was climbing a tough 510 rated crack directly below the dangling jumper. And Justin was less experienced with traditional climbing, so he looked to River for guidance. This was a critical moment and she knew she had to act fast. The jumper's life was on the line. River had been rock climbing for years and had extensive traditional climbing experience, which is climbing with and placing protection rather than clipping into pre-placed bolts. The traditional climber has to know how to find the route, whereas a sport climber, they follow the bolts up a particular route. And they weren't even sure if the jumper was alive. He was limp, unconscious, and the rock was just splattered with his blood. And luckily, River also had wilderness first responder training, so her training kicked in and she took control of the situation. And it was a dangerous situation for her. If the wind picked up, the chute could come off the ledge and the jumper could plummet to the ground and she'd be directly underneath him. So she made a plan with Justin and they decided that if the jumper was to fall, that Justin would yell rock and then River would know the jumper was coming down above her. She said, I brought everything I had. The crack was fist to fours and then it was all chossy and awful. And then it got so wide, I didn't have any gear for it. But she kept going as blood continued to drip down the wall, spattering her and the rock. When she climbed to about 40 feet, she saw that the victim was breathing and that was a relief. But she knew she couldn't let up. Her handholds were popping off, the rock was sandy, and the gear was scary, she said. She finally got to eye level with the victim who was moaning. And he was begging her to get the weight off of his leg and to help him. And he started to move to lessen the pain in his leg because he had all of his weight on that leg, which ended up being a broken femur. And then he started thrashing around and River could see that the parachute was beginning to slip. He was in so much pain, but she still had to get him to safety. So as she was climbing over to him, she said, you're a f***ing badass, you got this. We're gonna get you out of here. When she got to him, she clipped him to her anchor. Right then she said she felt a huge wave of relief, even though she knew she still had a ways to go. She pulled out an emergency knife from his harness and one by one she began cutting the parachute lines. When she was about to cut the very last line, she hesitated for a bit because it was a scary moment, but she had no other choice. She had to cut him loose. And when she cut it, she felt his weight transfer from the chute onto her harness. And she knew then that she had him. An anchor got him clipped in. After securing him came the moment of truth as River cut the parachute. Okay, here we go, you know. <laughs> and I just like clipped him and he tran the tra weight transferred really flawlessly to me and then we were able to lower to the ground. River got the victim to the ground safely and everyone was around her, was thanking her and she said she didn't really realize what a big deal it was because she was just kind of running on adrenaline. Once like all the hugs started coming, I was just like, oh, I'm really letting, like getting the gravity of the situation. And she didn't really have time to sit and think about what she was doing or how important it was. Justin hugged her and thanked her for saving his friend's life. Search and rescue had arrived by then and they got the victim airlifted and to the hospital. Without the quick action of River and Justin, search and rescue would have had to repel 300 feet from the top to reach the victim. 
and it could have taken them hours, and those were hours that the victim may not have had. He was in pretty serious condition. But he did recover, and he and Justin became really close friends with River, and they all keep in touch to this day. Justin described how impressed he was with River. He said that she was super calm the whole time. You would have thought that it was just another climb. She was talking to him and calming him down the whole way. She just killed it. River's takeaway from that day made her realize how fragile human life is in, and the human capacity to just do. She said the human mind and body and soul have such a capacity to show up for someone in need. I'm grateful to have been there and to be able to do my part. That weekend there were three other base jumping accidents that search and rescue had to attend to, so it was a pretty dangerous weekend. River returned to that spot later on to clean up the crack and name it. She came up with a name with her new friend, aka the base jumper she rescued, and they called it Lifeline. She was able to measure the distance and laughed at how she was just awful at judging the distance because she actually thought it was closer to 100 feet when she saw it. She said, going back to this crack was a beautiful experience. I feel so grateful that I was able to honor this perfect crack in this way. I'm grateful for it granting me access to my new friend that day. So let me know, would you ever try base jumping? Are these people completely crazy and off the rockers? In the documentary I mentioned, the base jumpers actually describe themselves as crazy, so there may be something to that.